Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about uh, pyramids and volume of pyramids um, as part of the advanced mathematics course for high school students. It's presented on unizor.com website. That's where I suggest you to watch this lecture because it contains some um, comments, notes, whatever. You can read basically notes for all these lectures like, like a textbook. All right, so um, last lecture was about Cavalieri's principle applied to the volume of a triangular pyramid. And we have derived a very nice formula about the volume of the pyramid, which is one third product of the area of the base times altitude. Now, um, what about non-triangle pyramids? I mean, there are uh, quadrilateral pyramids, penta, uh, pentagon based, etc. Well, actually, the formula is exactly the same, and let me explain you why. It's actually very simple. Let's consider you have a um, hexagonal pyramid, okay? So, let me draw some kind of a hexagonal and this is the side edges all right side edges and obviously there is one here And these two are invisible. Okay. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. This is my hexagonal pyramid. Now, what I'm going to do right now, I will draw three diagonals from A to C, from A to D, and from A to E. Now I can consider my hexagonal pyramid as a combination of four pyramids S, A, B, C, D, E, F equals S, A, B, C union S A C D union S A D E and union S A E F. Now the union of all these triangular pyramids is exactly our hexagonal pyramid, right? So basically I'm cutting my hexagonal pyramid by planes SAC vertically, SAD vertically, and SAE vertically. And this division gives me three different uh, triangular pyramids. Now all of them share the same altitude because the altitude is basically uh, the distance from the apex to the plane where the base is concerned. And uh, the basis of all these pyramids are exactly in the same plane as the basis of the uh, original hexagon. So the, uh, so the H is the same. Now, what about the volume? Well, volume is additive function, so if I clearly D uh, d uh, divide my pyramid in, in four different pyramids which um, have no uh, common volume basically because they're just touching each other so the volume of the big pyramid the hexag uh, hexagon pyramid hexagonal pyramid is the sum of these four volumes now um, the volume of uh, S a, B, C is equal to area of 
ABC times H divide, divided by, by, by 3, right? Where H is the altitude of the pyramid. Now, analogously, volume SACD is equal to area of ACD, which is a triangle, by the way. So I can put here with a triangle here times the same h and divide by 3. Analogously, SADE is equal to area of ADE times h divided by 3. And the last, SAEF is area of AEF times h divided by 3. Now, if I will add them together, what will I get? Well, obviously, h divided by 3 is outside of parentheses. And what's in the parentheses? Some of the areas of these four triangles, which is actually an area of a hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F. So, as before, we have received exactly the same formula. The volume is equal to one-third of area of the base times altitude. And that's it for today's theoretical part of the lecture. It's very short, so I have decided to complement it with some typical and relatively simple problems related to volume. So, let's go to the problems. I have six problems here, and they are just re reinforce uh, the knowledge about volumes and pyramids. Okay, the first problem is we have a tetrahedron with all edges equal to D. D, 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 and D. All right, so question is, what's its volume? Well, let's think about it. Again, volume is one-third of the product of uh, altitude and the area um, of, the, of the base. Now, the base is a triangle. which has all sides equal, equilateral triangle. Now, what's its area? Well, that's easy, right? You draw a, a perpendicular uh, from one of the vertices onto the opposite side. Obviously, it divides it in two, d over two and d over two. Now, this um, altitude of this triangle is equal to, from the Pythagorean theorem, d square minus d over 2 square square root, right? From this, this is hypotenuse and these are two catheters. So, this is, a, uh, the hypotenuse is equal to d and one catheter, catheter is equal to d over 2. So, that's the that's the formula, right? Now, this is the height, and the area is base times height divided by 2. So it's times d and divided by 2. That's my area. Okay, so area is done. Yeah, obviously we can um, make it a little bit simpler, which is what? This is d square, this is d square. This is one quarter, so um, it's d out of the square root, and this d is square, and under the square root would be one minus one fourth, which is um, three fourths, and square root is square root of three divided by square root of four, which is two, and this two, this is four, right? So this is my area. All right. Now, how about the altitude of the pyramid? 
Well, let's just drop the perpendicular from the top and this is a center um, of, the, of the base. Center is this. It's the point of intersection of all three altitudes of, or, or all three angle bisectors or medians or whatever. So we will know, we would like to have this. So the distance from this center to, uh, to the side. Now we know that all medians are intersecting um, in the ratio of 1 to 2. So it's 1 third here and 2 thirds there. This is a very known property of medians in, in the triangle. So this is the equilateral triangle, so obviously it has the same thing. Now this is the, this is the altitude, so we are talking about two-thirds of the altitude. Now we know what altitude is, it's this one. So we need two-thirds of this altitude, which is, again, d goes out of the square root and this is square root of 3 divided by 2. So that's my uh, segment between the center and, and the vertex, right? Which is what? d square root of 3 divided by 3. Now, so this is this piece. Now, but I need an altitude. Now, this is actually the right triangle because this is the perpendicular to this and this is the hypotenuse. So, hypotenuse is equal to d. So, my catheter is equal to d squared minus d squared 3 divided, divided by 3 and square root. So that's my altitude, which is equal to d goes out, 1 minus 1 third, 2 thirds, so it's d square root of 2 divided by square root of 3. Now, what's next? Next I have to multiply my altitude to the area and divide by 3. So it will be d to the power of 3 square root of square root of 3 would go would cancel each other square root of 2 will remain and 4 plus I have to divide by 3 would be 12 so this looks like this is a volume of the uh, tetrahedron with all equal edges that's it Next. Next is, consider we have an Egyptian pyramid which has a square as a base and some kind of height. This is my Egyptian pyramid. So this is um, the regular pyramid in, in the sense that there is a regular square actually at the base and um, the apex is projecting exactly into the center of, uh, of the pyramid. All right, so what's known is D is the side of a square and S is um, the edge, the side edge of the pyramid. Now obviously if you are in front of the Egyptian pyramid you can very easily measure this and this and that is sufficient to evaluate the volume. Now obviously it would be even easier if you know the altitude but you can't really measure altitude directly because it's 
kind of inside so you can measure the side by just just actually walking on it and you can measure the the side of the square at the base which is also by walking but you can't measure the altitude of the pyramid but you can calculate it obviously again let's just drop the perpendicular down it's supposed to fall right in the center of this of this square all right so that would be something like this now what would be the length of the altitude well that's basically very easy because you have again right triangle this is s well this is uppercase s this is lowercase s Now, square has the side D, which makes this, which is half of a diagonal. Diagonal is D square plus D square square root, right? D square plus D square, and this is the hypotenuse. Now we have half of it, so it's divided by 2, which is equal to D square root of 2 over 2. So that's this particular piece, d square root of 2 over 2. Now what we have to do is to find the altitude using the Pythagorean theorem, which is s square minus, uh, this is d square over 2, right? Square root of 2 is 2, this is 4, and square root of this. So this is my altitude times d square which is area of the base and divided by 3 so before uh, any kind of simplification but I don't think we can simplify it even further because this is s and this is d so we can't really do anything about it so this is basically the final formula that's it all we needed is just to find out what's the altitude. That's the most difficult part of it, which is actually not difficult at all. Okay, now let's do reverse. What if I know the volume of the pyramid? This Egyptian pyramid has the volume V and side of the square of the base is D. And what I have to do is I have to find H. But let's just use the previous formula. Now, the previous formula was what? One third uh, D square, square root of S square minus D square over 2, right? So we just have to resolve it for S. This is pure algebra. So what happens is 3B divided by D square is a square root, right? Now, we square it, and we get s square minus d square over 2. And we have to plus d square over 2 to get s square. And we have to do the square root of this, and that what gives me the, the s. Right? Yeah, seems to be fine. I had the same answer before. All right, that's it. Very simple. Just algebraic resolving of the equation. Next. All right. Let's go back to our hexagon at the base. And let's consider this is the right hexagon. Now, what's known about this hexagon is the following. Its altitude, which is SO, SO equals 
all a equals d. So this is basically, you can consider it a radius of the uh, circle which circumscribes our regular hexagon. So all these are radiuses, obviously. So the altitude and this radius, which doesn't look like they are equal in my picture, but um, supposedly they are all the same and equal to d. So the question is, what's the value? Well, again, we know the altitude, so now we, all we have to do is to evaluate the, the area. What is the area? Area is six equilateral triangles, each of them having d as a, as a side. Now, I have, I have already derived this formula before. Now, obviously, I forgot it. So let me just derive it again. So the altitude is d square minus d over 2 square square root. That's altitude times base divided by 2. So that's my area. And um, the altitude is d, so I have to multiply it by d and divide by 3. So that would be my answer for the volume. Right? So it would be d from here would be d, and d squared would be d cubed. 1 minus 1 quarter is 1 by 2 times 2 times 3, which is 8, right? Something like this. looks like it. Okay. Hope I don't make a mistake. All right. Um. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I had to multiply it by six. Right. So uh, I have six um, triangles like that. So it should be multiplied by 6. So d square root of 3 over 8. Was it 8? No, wait a moment. 2, 2, and, two, two and 3. 2, 2, and 3. Right? And then I have to multiply it by 6. OK, here it is. And it would be d square root of 3 over 2. That's what it is. That's the, that's the right answer. OK. Yeah, I forgot that we have six triangles at the base. All right, next. Next, we have a triangular pyramid. Next, what we do is we have two midpoints, this midpoint between A and B, and this midpoint between A and C. And what I do next, I draw a plane from S, P, and Q. This plane. It divides our pyramid into halves. One half well, not two halves, two parts. Right, two pyramids. One has a triangular base, APQ, and another has a quadrilateral PQCB at the base. But the apex is the same, and therefore the um, height is the same, the altitude is the same. Now, what's necessary to do is to find out the ratio between the volumes, this to this. But now let's think about it. If the volume is equal to um, uh, area of the base times height divided by 3, height is the same and 3 is the same. So if we will divide one volume by another, let's say S1 would be area of this big uh, quadrilateral. 
and uh, then times h divided by 3. That's the volume of the bigger part. Divided by S2, which is area of APQ triangle, times the same h divided by 3. So obviously this thing is canceling out. And the ratio is actually the ratio between two um, areas. OK, now that's easy, because now we have a plane geometry problem. So this is our triangle, ABC, and we draw from midpoint to midpoint. Now, what's the ratio between these? Well, obviously, um, this triangle, APQ, is similar to ABC. Its base is half, and its height is half, which means its area is one quarter of the whole triangle. So the area of APQ is equal to one quarter of area of ABC. Well, if this is one quarter, now this is three quarters. So what's the ratio between them? Three quarters divided by one quarter, which is three. The ratio is three. And I have the last problem, which is actually not very difficult, but it's challenging to draw a picture. Let me try. Again, we have a triangular pyramid. I'll try to do it as big as I can. So this is a tetrahedron, tetrahedron. Now what I'm doing is I'm connecting all the midpoints of all edges. So from this midpoint, I connect to this midpoint and to this midpoint and to this midpoint and to this midpoint. and S, A, B, C. Now, on A, C midpoint is somewhere here, and I connected uh, this midpoint to this, to this, then it's invisible. This, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Now what happens, drawn right now, is, well, if you can imagine, it's two quadrilateral pyramids. One is having this as an apex, and it goes that way. And now there is that apex and it goes this way and they are having the same, sharing the same base. So that's how it looks. Now my point is what's the ratio between the volume of the uh, of this it's actually octahedron because it has 1, 2, 3, 4 on this side and 1, 2, 3, 4 on that side uh, faces. So it's octahedron. It's like this, approximately. I should use four fingers rather than five, something like this. And these are, and these are apices. This is one, this is another. So the question is, what kind of a volume occupied is occupied by this inside octahedron relative to the whole tetrahedron. Well, let's just think about it. These are all um, lines which connect the midpoints, right? So, basically, I can say that pyramid A prime, B prime, 
prime c prime s a prime b prime c prime takes what part of the volume of the total pyramid well it's a scaling right because if you will scale it with this center and the ratio 2 you would get from this point to this because this is twice as long uh, twice as long from b prime you go to b with a scaling factor of 2 and from c prime to c so this is a true similarity 3d similarity three-dimensional similarity between s a prime b prime c prime and s a b c and the ratio is 2 which means that the volume ratio equal 1 8 of V where V is the volume of the original pyramid right 2 to the third degree if you remember when, when we were talking about similarity we were talking about the 3d similarity if there is a scaling then all linear dimensions are multiplied by the scaling factor but the volume is multiplied by scaling factor to the power of 3 um, I do suggest you to refer me to, 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 to that lecture uh, about uh, 3D similarity. It's, it's a previous topic, actually. All right. Now, so let's just cut it off, this one-eighth of my volume. Now, in a similar fashion, we can consider uh, a pyramid with the apex A and uh, base A prime, B prime, D. Again, this particular pyramid, A, A prime, B prime, D, with A as an apex, is similar in three dimensional sense to our pyramid, but considered as A being an ap uh, apex and S, C, B being a, uh, the base. So we are cutting this piece and it's also one eighth for the same reason because the scaling factor is, is two. So basically what I'm saying is that for each side we are have to actually cut the piece of the main pyramid which is equal to one eighth so we cut all these four corners from s from a from b and from c and what's left is actually uh, our octahedron right you just have to properly imagine it to yourself So the pyramid, actually, no, the second one is not A, A prime, B prime, D, it's A, A prime, uh, we are cutting we are cutting parallel to this. It's this, call it E, F. We are cutting with apex A and the base and the base A prime E and D. Yes, that one. A prime E D is the pyramid which cut, we are cutting from the point A. And then from the point B, considered as an apex again, we are cutting this triangle, which is G B prime F. And from the point C, we are cutting C prime E F. That's how it is. So by cutting these four corners, 
we actually uh, have remained our uh, octahedron. So it's four times, this each one of them is one eighth, so it's four times times one eighth, so it's V divided by two. So we have to cut half of the volume basically to get to the uh, octahedron. So octahedron occupies half of the tetrahedron in this case. And again, it's kind of a simple, but you have to really properly, you know, position your viewing point whenever you are cutting the edges. Well, that was my last problem. I hope I didn't make a mistake here. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so. Thanks very much. Uh, I think it's very useful, uh, useful exercises. And uh, I, I do suggest you actually to do the same maybe calculations a, a couple of times. The problems are listed on the website as notes for this particular lecture. So basically that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.